<laughs> so, okay, um, moving on, we're going to speed to your career and your first, allegedly, your first professional engagement yeah. was with George Michael? It was with George Michael. This is after Wham? This was after Wham. After the Wham was, day was, when he was solo. I will be a father figure. Oh, not father figure. So, fig- yeah, this was father figure father George days. Michael. Mm. Just, so, it was at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I'm um, like, yeah, yeah, Madison Square Garden, talking, 1992. I'm like, who has a first gig at MSG? G. MSG with George Michael and how that I, I had all these guy friends who were musicians in church trying to be producers. They needed to get demos done. They couldn't afford to pay anybody. So they'd be like, Kelly, can you come through the studio and just drop this vocal for me? So I used to do that for my friends who were trying yeah. to become producers. Yeah. One of them ended up being heard by someone that that was connected at Sony Music, knew Luther Vandross. They had him come and do the wedding of, of one of Luther's background singers, do all the music and there were Sony executives there. So when George came into town, he wanted to hire a local group to fill out his sound for mm-hmm. those big songs like Father Figure mm-hmm. for these new arrangements. And they hired a choir in the city um, on the first night and he hated them. He told mm-hmm. them, find me somebody else. So on that second night that he was at Madison Square Garden, I got a call at 12 to be at the garden at three to rehearse from four to six to be ready to go on at seven. Did you know who with? Um, I did not know until I got there. Yeah. And it was probably good that they didn't tell right. me. They told me we're black yeah. and, and we're going on tonight. We're going to learn the stuff and we're going on tonight. So did you like freak? Um, I did not freak out. It's weird. So, so growing up in church with my grandfather, who was such a prominent bishop in the Church of God in Christ, I grew up around the Clark sisters. Mm-hmm. I grew up around the Winans. I grew up around, uh, you know, Commission, the Walter Hawkins, you know, Andre Crouch. So I grew up around people who in my world were superstars yeah. as far as church is concerned. Sure. So I learned how to move like that. And even if I was freaking out inside, how to just stay stone faced. Well, you were saying that uh, somebody had heard you before, but somebody else heard you rehearsing one time, too. Pregnant and sick as a dog. By the name of Mariah, Mariah Carey. Carey. Yeah, that was gig number two. That is crazy gig to start that way. Yeah. And she heard you. And liked you. Yeah. And which is already great. And, yeah. you know, uh, I guess uh, she, you got introduced to what, Tommy M- Matola? That same day. So she heard me and she didn't want to approach me. She was extremely shy, mm-hmm. extremely shy. Trey Lorenz, who was singing background for I her. I remember, yeah. So she said, go over there and talk to that girl and see if you can get her to sing again. The choir, it was my friend, got hired again to put another group together by the music uh, executives from Sony. So that's how we got the Mariah gig. I was first trimester pregnant with my son, sick. They broke everybody to go eat. The smell of food made me want to, So I didn't go to lunch. I stayed back in the in the room where we were rehearsing and sat at the piano and started to sing. And she walked in while I was at the piano. So your piano playing, did you learn that as a child growing up in the church as well? So did- everybody in my family plays. Okay. My mother played, her brother, her sister, my grandmother, all of my grandmother's siblings. Oh, it was, in um, it was it's, almost it's inbred. In the family, yeah. So And I didn't stick with it like my mother wanted me to. Because the, the teacher would, you know, when they tried to teach me form and how to read music, I could play by ear. But she wanted me to learn how to read. And I was just like, yeah. So Mariah, of course, has a rep for being a little diva diverific from time to time. Yes. Which, you know, that's what divas do. They I think so. Uh, how did you find working with her and, cl- like, you know, working with her? Was it easy? Was it a little tense? Were I was you- 18 years old and pregnant. Right. And really glad to have a job. I had a lot of fun. How did she feel about that? So um, once she found out, she was like, you're having a baby. Because we're, there's only what? There are only three years between us. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was really young. Yeah. And we hit it off. Like, you know, she wasn't doing a lot of hanging out. She wasn't going out yeah, in the Tommy clubs and that kind of thing. hang out that much so, anyway. So I ended up spending a lot of time with her at home. Like when she wanted to hang out, if she wanted to do something or even if, like literally she wanted to go to a concert one night. And so she was like, I'm going to a concert. I want you to come with me. So outside of the job, I spent a lot of time with her like that as well. And so I was just, I was enamored with her gift. I thought it was amazing. I mean, you know, later on I found out, you know, that she was mixed race, but I'm looking at her and she don't look like anybody I know that sings the way she sings, but she's singing that. You know what I mean? They the same thing about Tina Marie. Yeah. So it was, it was amazing to me. I, I felt extremely blessed. We had a lot of fun. We bounced ideas off of each other in the studio musically, like a lot of times, you know, she'd be in there and working on something. She'd be like, eh, I don't know if I like that. Kelly, what do you hear? And so that's really what got me into 
beginning to arrange things, which I later started doing for people and getting paid to do it, mm -hmm. you know, because um, she actually trusted my ear. So okay, a lot of times well, she would ask me. On an unprofessional question, what did you feel about her being married to this older guy, though? You know what? It didn't bother me. He was older. He, yeah, no, he, he was definitely Way. older. He was definitely older, but that didn't bother me. I was like, is she in love? Hell, do, do they love each other? Like for me, I, I, to me, it was interesting because again, there's only three years between us. Um, but you know, I was there before they were married. I, I attended the wedding. You know, I was around for a lot and I saw somebody who took really good care of somebody that he loved. And I don't know, perhaps maybe because my dad wasn't there when I grew up, maybe I kind of felt like shit. I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind, you know. Yeah, but everybody I likes cool. a, a, a zaddy. A zaddy, every now yeah. <laughs> she had a zaddy, hell. Oh, like, zaddy. <laughs> um, so when you were pregnant, was were you married at the time? I was not, which was, whoo. But was this your, your future husband's child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, mm -hmm. it was. So you say it was woo, was this with the, the family, the church folks, or what? We were both church kids and preacher's kids. His uh -huh. mother and his father was a preacher, my mom was a preacher, my dad was a preacher, he ended up leaving the church, and he had his own struggles. Um, but then, you know, the, I was really more concerned about my grandparents. I felt like oh. they were going to be so disappointed. Um, yeah. But later on, uh, down the line, mm -hmm. he started to manage you, correct? He did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you feel about, and I guess you can only speak on your own mm -hmm. uh, situation, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't even have that situation. I got my own opinions. Uh, how do you feel about women artists who have uh, husbands uh, managing them or, or even, you know, the parents like Ashanti's got her mom, yeah. has always had her mom, and they've done well. They have. But um, everybody doesn't do well with the husband their chair thing. So yeah. how did it work for you, so and it, how do you it, feel it about it? It did not work well for me at all. It, you know, it, and the thing about it is I feel like it takes a very special, a very secure man to be married to a woman like me, to mm. be married to a Mary J. Blige, to be married to— And I, I speak about for them because sure. I know them. I know them, and they were in the same situation yeah. at one point that I was in. It takes, it takes a very, very— special kind of man to be married to a woman like that and to understand that you hold your position at home but outside the house it really is about your wife and what about you know it would seem to me that coming home it might be hard to turn off the business and just go into normal mode right? i actually was very intentional about that and you, I'm, I'm extremely, you know, you've seen me at home. I'm extremely, you've, you've been to homes of mine. I am very, so I can't speak for anybody else, but I enjoyed stepping into the role of domestic because it's something that I always wanted. I came from a broken home. Um, and so that was always very important to me to create a space at home that felt like a home. So, you know me, I cook, I clean, right, right. you know, I do all of that stuff. I ran bath water. I, you know, I make beds. I do all of that. And I enjoyed it. So, you because know, at some point you get tired of being in charge and you want some soft place to yeah, land when you come home. Absolutely. But sometimes the person who is not the artist, they get more carried away with the doggone career than, than the artist does. But in management, I guess they yeah. would have to do that. It's a very fine line to walk, I think. I described my situation. We were the artist and the rock star. And I was the artist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I hope the people do as well. 